Welcome, Judas, to live coverage of YCS Ghent. Welcome back. You're awesome. So right now, we have eight rounds of Yu-Gi-Oh played yesterday. Three more played today. And these guys are fighting for their lives for the top 32 spot. But without further ado, let's introduce the duelists. On my right, Alessandra. Come on in, come on in, come on. Come on in, stand next to me. Don't, don't be scared, it's fine. I'm not gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it was a bit of a... Uh, how did you, did you get enough rest? Did you sleep well? Did you, are you do you feel yeah. ready to go? Yeah, about uh, five hours. I think it's enough. Uh, for today and yesterday was a big uh, big day so we can sleep a little and that's all okay like a lot of you probably don't know uh, Alexander has won a few you know uh, tournaments and topped a few of them as well you know regionals topping WCQs and stuff like that during his career um, do you think you want to make an aim for the world's race or do you think Mwah. This is fun, I'm having a lot of fun, I'm enjoying it with my friends, and I kind of want to keep on doing that. Uh, you mean uh, the race for the world? I think that uh, this year it will be difficult because I have a new job. So uh, I think we have to play every weekend to, to go to the world because uh, you, you need points. And so maybe I uh, will try to do top four at the European uh, this year, but uh, not the race for the worlds. Ah, okay, so just more or less just playing it out, see what happens and enjoying yourself. Yeah. Well, uh, take a seat and thank you for talking to me. And now from the left corner, well, he told me he had a feature before, but uh, I didn't know that. That's awesome to know. So we have with us Sebastian. Marvin, Marvin sorry. Marvin Sebastian. <laughs> Hi, man. Uh, how are you doing? I'm totally fine. Um, I'm very confident in my deck, and yeah, yesterday worked out, so. Okay, so then you've been feeling confident in your deck. Didn't you have like a few rounds, any matchups you had, you thought, well, maybe if I probably played a bit more optimal, or you probably thought, oh God, that was way closer than it should have been. Um, I think I made like one misplay yesterday, and um, only one, so yeah, I'm fine with that, totally. And most of the matches weren't too close, so yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's pretty dope. Um, we'll take a seat, man. Cool. So the duelists are gonna decide who goes first by throwing the dice. So three was thrown, and a four. So who goes first? Okay, so Marvin goes first. So I'm gonna put on your headphones so you can get ready. And then, if they're ready, you're ready, let's go over to the caster's desk. Welcome back to day two of the YCS Gen 2019. I am thrilled to be here again. We are having an awesome match for oh, the next yes. round. Both oh, yes. players are XO so far. They've shown incredible performance. <laughs> and, and they're confident with themselves, yes. you can say I would guess. They're really confident. So. I can't see if they have their decks out or not. Um, yeah, they have their decks out already. They're ready to play. So I think we should not waste any more time. Yep, and let's indeed. just get into the match. And if you already see the first cards of the deck of Marvin, you will know a lot will be going on. So let's go, Duelist. Round 9 shall start now. OK. So. <laughs> Oh, they're getting the decks out now. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh, shit. Thank you for this inf information. Yeah, I, I saw them, yeah. I saw yes. them putting the decks out. Okay, but they just joined the table. But you can already see going yep. through his side deck, what he's playing. And Marvin has been known for this deck a while. If you have seen Marvin playing a tournament in like the last half year, you would probably know that he's going with pure Endymion. He's like the pure Endymion master, I would say. And, uh, I mean, he's not the only pure Endymion master in this <laughs> coverage, right? I mean, I have seen you top a regional recently. I like today. the deck too. Yeah, I topped in, in regional as well. I just love the deck. It's so versatile. And the introduction of Nibiru actually kind of favors the deck. You would say it actually hurts a pendulum deck, but you can play around it so easily But because you will always, if you have like 
and servants. all right hand, you will yeah. always get into the Jekyll King before the Pendulum Summon. So you can absolutely smash your opponent if he wants to use his main deck Nibiru. And let's have a look at the list of Alexandra. Is, yeah, is there yeah. something like a main deck Nibiru? There actually maybe? is a main deck Nibiru. Yeah. I d he doesn't even play Ash Blossom, Oof. as far as I know. So, like, Nibiru has also decreased the amount of hand traps mm -hmm. that people play because they, first of all, expect less combo. And uh, second of all, Nibiru is just so much more effective than all the hand shifts that you could play. And that favors a deck that does not lose to Nibiru, but is still a combo deck. Yeah, like versus, this deck versus this deck, Ogre and Ash would be so, so much better. Yeah. Nibiru but just does not hurt at all. It just hurts when you have a really bad hand or when your opponent has like multiple hand traps. And obviously, if you have to stop the Ash at some point with your Jekyll King and then you just get thrown off by the Nibiru, that's pretty yeah. hard. So, um... They are really close to having their shuffling finished. We haven't seen that on the stream yet. Good, good old power <laughs> shuffling. So that's that's quite nice. I mean, we have seen it after siding, yeah. arguably. And but I love that Marvin with such a unique deck is so confident in yeah. it. And he's like, I, I, I did not even had <laughs> close matches. It was all yeah. pretty one-sided. Yeah. I just know my deck. I know the deck is really good, and I really did damage to my opponents in day one. I mean, he is 8-0, so he has all the rights to be confident. Uh, what we can see in the hand of Alexandre is uh, the Orcus Crescendo, which is a card that you like to hard draw in Orcus, but you do not necessarily want it in your opening hand if you're going second. That's uh, true. The die roll was crucial. Yeah. Marvin decided to go first because he won the die roll. And, and let's look <gasps> at the hand. Ooh, double servant, master. Okay, master servers is not the best card. This hand this. could turn out to be kind of bricky. I guess he kind of needs yeah. a good draw with the upstart there. I mean, he can just go uh, servant, servant, and electromite. Yes, so he will be able to get into combo, and his opponent only has Phantasma and no really relevant interruption. Yeah. But you usually want to have the safe route of going Jackal King first, and that could be. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to hurt because here. There's, uh, <laughs> there, there is no... Yeah, at least he has some way so. into yeah. combo, and he already has Servant, which yeah. is the heart of the deck, so he can already yeah. explode with this. So the hand isn't really safe for him, but it's still going to be a really strong outcome. Yeah, seeing the hand of Alexandra, we know that this hand should be enough. And look, yeah. he starts with a normal summon of Time, Time Gazer. Gazer. And now special summoning the Master Servers from the extra deck using the effect of... Mythical Beast Jackal King. That's how he is doing it indeed. This there he is, the good old Master Cerberus has been around. And look, yeah. he already got out the Master Cerberus on the field before he activates the Upside Goblin yeah. so that Mythical Beast Cerberus can collect counters already in case he draws into something like Mythical Institution, for example, which can use counters from the whole field. So he actually played it very well, being able to use that counters. Even if he just goes into the Pendulum Summon of Electrum Knight now. I mean, we have seen Pendulum decks use Servant a lot already. Yeah. Uh, they didn't run cards like Mythical Institution. <laughs> Absolutely uh, not. Why not? Why does, what does the card do? Why don't you tell us? The card is so versatile. And I was playing the deck as well, as I said. And people never know this card at all. And Mythical Institution is just so good. You can collect counters, two of them each time, if a Mythical Beast on the field is destroyed. By card effect or by battle even by their own effects, which makes it so good. And then you get two counters on it, but you don't even have to use counters of itself. You can use counters of the whole field to search for a monster which can put spell counters on it from your deck. Meaning you can just remove three counters from the field, which would have been there to search for a Servant, or to search for Magisto, or to search for your scale you need. There's everything you could search out for. You That's can crazy. It is, right? <laughs> it is super crazy. And it can protect itself from destruction if you remove a counter from it as well. So this card is really, really sick. So it doesn't even lose to Ogre. So he uses the effect of Heavy Metal Foes Electromite uh, to send the big boss monster of the Endymion structure deck that was released and was the reason why this deck is being played right now, yeah. obviously. Uh, he draws a card with Electromite. I couldn't see what he drew with the Upstart Goblin. He actually activated another Master Cerberus in the scale ah, okay. to pop with the Electromite, so I okay, guess it so was another Master Cerberus. Yeah, so that was a dead draw, but yeah. he doesn't really care. Ooh, see. now there is the high scale, and Servant is ready to use its effect as well. Seeing a Phantasma on your opponent's side in game one, does it give you 
a brief indicator about what your opponent is playing? It's probably not a full combo deck because they usually want to go first and want to reduce the chance of bricking going first. Yeah. Because as Phantasma is a card that helps your deck with your consistency, it doesn't help you going first. And it helps protecting your board, so... That is true. You don't necessarily want to have that. Oh. Um, and there is his second servant coming to use. And look how Marvin is placing his cards carefully. It is really important how you place your monsters because now it is time for the Pendulum Summon and you want to have that extra deck Pendulum Spots ready yeah. to be used. And that's what he's doing right there. So what's, what's the best board that this deck can put out? I, I guess that it's not as big as the board that a Pendulum Dragon combo deck can put out. But what, what's like the best thing you can have with this deck? Oh, a Lord of Darkness. Yeah, Lord of Darkness is so good right now. He, he discarded his whole hand, right? Oh, did he? Oh, it's not really the best card. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. But still, it generates spell counters all over, making that Endymion and Scale actually being able to remove six spell counters from the field. Yeah. So that would be an additional monster. And yeah, you were talking about uh, regular Pendulum decks having a big negate board. And the Mythical Endymion deck differs from that a lot, because they're not even playing Guard Dragons at yeah. all in their extra deck. And no dragons in the main deck either. So you won't see like um, the Seal being on the field in the end which is arguably not that strong of an interruption anyways, because it just bounces the monsters on your opponent's side. But you will end on Appaloosa. You can decide to go for Dweller. It's like very, very versatile. You can choose which route to go. Appaloosa usually will be there, because you already have a Link 2 out, and you can just use two more monsters. You have like yeah. a dead Time Gaze on the field you could use for that, for example. And also you and have... the Servant. And the Servant as well, exactly. He's pretty much dead too. I mean, he has a quick effect in your opponent's turn that can give spell counters to everything on the field, but you have to discard the card in hand for that. And he does not have any cards in hand, as we have just seen that his Allure of Darkness was indeed just too alluring, but not rewarding. Yeah, and look, he actually used yeah. the effect of the Servant. I mean, he wants to get rid of the good old Phantasmae, so that makes sense. Yeah, and so he can even collect a spell counter with it because yeah. he popped a card on his opponent's side of the field. And that effect of the Master activates in the scale, does not target at all, so Phantasmic can surely not do anything he, about he, it. He really passed on uh, That's what I was just wondering Appaloosa. about, too. He could have gone for Appaloosa there. I'm really curious why he did not go for Appaloosa. I mean, he has double Jekyll right there, so he already has two monster negates, and all of his cards now are collecting spell counters from his opponent's spells as well. And he doesn't have cards in hand. He does not have cards in hand, that's true. But he will be able to get a card in hand by the bounce effect of oh, yeah. the Endymion if he wants to. And he probably will go for it at some point. But how much does collecting spell counters in your opponent's turn help you now? I mean, you can decide which cards to bounce now, basically, because okay. that mystical beast uh, Jekyll King now has two counters as well, like the second one. So that is basically being able to pop back to the hand too, but you want to keep it on hand. Oh, and look, that's an interesting decision. Marvin let that engage go through, but now announces the negate effect of his I, master. I really support this decision because if it's a multi-roll, if it's a pure Sky Striker deck, you want to negate the multi-roll or a Mystic Mine. Oh. Rather not a Mystic Mine. And did you see but that? It's so worthy to keep the Electrum Knight on board yeah. in your opponent's turn because he just resolved the draw effect of it yeah. as well. So. Serve. Oh, and look at that card he just drew right there. Spell power oh, mastery. mastery. <laughs> so if he survives this turn, and I mean he has a lot of reasons to believe yeah. that he's surviving this turn with that board, it is pretty very, uh, very, very likely that he has comeback potential as well. Oh, but he also, he now already used the spell uh, trap negate and the jackal on the jackalope. So that is really brave, as there is a mathematician in the hand of Alexandre, and then he can go into Dingirsu and do a lot, basically. So he negated both dangers, both Jackalope and Nessie? Is yeah. that true? And now he can go into soft Orcus combo mm. with a Crescendo in hand and Babel in hand. Okay, so that's a bit unfortunate. Oh, he drew both of his Galatea targets. And he's only playing one yeah, of he's each, He's playing right? uh, Return, but Return doesn't Ooh. really do too much in soft combo. But still, that's an interesting decision to play Return, isn't it? Oh no, I really support the card. This card is insane in grind games. You are expecting a lot of Orcus mirror matches. Mm -hmm. It was the second most played deck. And this card really gives you an edge if your opponent isn't playing it. Like, it's it's always... You remember Destiny Draw into Malicious? Yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> you get your grave, effe grave effects going. Sometimes you have monsters lying around, then you get two extra draws, and you're playing so many good cards as your engine is relatively yeah. small. Uh, okay. We, we saw Marvin just using his monster negates on the first thing appearing, yep. both dangerous. And I 
kind of have to say that you have to do that from time to time because when you're facing Lunar Night Orcus, and Lunar Night Orcus would have been a possibility at no. that point, I mean, they're not really playing engaged drones. You could already argue that he's playing pure Orcus from seeing that. Yeah. But still, if you're playing with Lunar Night Orcus, they are so, so good cards, and they already need two monsters on the board to start off. So negating the dangers and drawing into important cards can really help you there. And if they already established like a few monsters on board, you just cannot really use your negations anymore. By the way, good choice uh, for his Galatea target. He shuffles back the Harp Horror so he can keep his Nightmare in the graveyard. Yeah, yeah uh, that's true. So he can stand by face, Nightmare shotgun his Dingirsu. Uh, mm -hmm. His skeleton to the graveyard to revive his thing here, so which he's probably going to send away. Yeah, but I mean, to do that, he would actually have to clear off both Jekyll Kings on the field. Otherwise, I that would just be negated, right? Do you easy, see that coming? Easily possible. Um, he can go for Dingirsu, yeah. and then... Ah, he can't attach then. Hmm. That's mm -hmm. true, exactly. Yeah, He mm -hmm. has to decide on whether to go with the Dingirsu sent or the Dingirsu detach. But he has Crescendo, so he could could negate one of the Jackal Kings. That is true as well. Yeah. Then again, his interruption of Crescendo would be out. <laughs> and it's he, a gamble. Do you really yeah. want to have that for Spellpower Mastery at this point? I mean, he doesn't know the card is there, but Spellpower Mastery and Endymion is already kind of a combo, right? Not. Yes, it is. It is. In what way do you, you can, mean? You can already. You can just go servant spell power, put a counter on it, put another counter on it, search a scale, activate it like Magister. Oh yeah, if, if you then, have servant yeah. and spell power master, yeah. you definitely have then a combo. Then you can yeah. already go into like the electromite that is on the field right now if it's your first turn, which it isn't. Uh, so it, this should really be hard to play through. Oh, looks like he wants to go into battle phase. He was thinking about it. He tributes oh, okay. his orcus nightmare. So he wants to draw into. Wait, that's not going to be negated by <laughs> That's Jekyll. not going to happen, but you can put spell counters on it, yeah. yeah well, okay. That is fine. <laughs> so, he has two more cards and he drew another Nightmare. That's not good. And also is, is it Vishuda in his hand? That also does not really help. No, it's Gizmag Orochi. Oh, that does help. A little right? better, yeah, because but you can you probably run over something. But you risk skeleton. Uh, it's definitely harsh. But I think he has to. Like, he I mean, that 2,450 attack points is really crucial because he can just <laughs> run over Jekyll Kings. He probably has to, do, has to do it, yeah. But even, even if he, let's say, I'm putting quotation marks with my fingers now, if he soft breaks the board of Marvin, Marvin has a lot of comeback potential yeah. because if you want to get rid of the negates, you will have to leave the Electromite up. And if you leave Electromite up and there's Spellpower Mastery and oh, Endymion yeah. in the hand of your opponent, you're not going to have a good time. That is true. We were saying he probably does not even need it to have that top deck with yeah. the Electronite, but now it, come in, it comes in really, really handy. I mean, it's additional cards. <laughs> you always want additional cards. You can fix your hand by using Electromite Pop Effect. You can take your extra deck cards back to your hand. No, you shouldn't use the plural right here. Oh, and he runs yeah. over the Electronite, meaning that there will be one Jekyll King surviving yeah. this turn. Oh no, maybe he sends away with the Gearsu. Yeah, that could be an option. Yeah, I mean, he has a nightmare in the graveyard now due to return, so that would work. It could be, it could be. And sadly, this Master of Endymion also suffers from the Dingirsu because it cannot be targeted and cannot be destroyed by card effects. Yeah. But Dingirsu just does none of that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he isn't even a problem. Master Endymion isn't a problem right now for Alexander. He's just suffering from these Jekyll Kings that can negate his skeleton effect or the nightmare effect. That is sadly true. And I really support the decision of leaving Time Gazer on the field as well, because most of the people don't know the monster effect of Time Gazer, but it just says that the first time one of your scales would be destroyed by card effect on your mm -hmm. turn, or like in any player's turn, it won't be destroyed. Yep. And that's like a thing people miss, but it can come in really handy because your opponent just throws an ogre on your scale yeah, and I you're like... I won games with that. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. People don't know it. They just be like, yeah, Time Gazer is that brick card you always draw <laughs> when you don't want to draw it. But no, it's a protection card as well, so it can come in quite handy and Marvin decided to <laughs> end his ball on. You would still rather have something else, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Chrono is probably better to just special him out, I guess, but... <laughs> <laughs> Still, it works out. I'm, I'm his Astrograph. <laughs> oh, Astrograph was a really was strong really card, fun too. to play. But yeah, it was really strong. Oh, and look, he just yeah. linked away Galatea and the Gizmag for the, the another. Oh, I mean, yeah, that the makes sense, so he can have the setup of Skeleton and uh, Dingirsu. Yeah, and 
Is he has a Jackal King being in the extra deck as well now. That looks pretty good yeah. for Marvin. He feels confident here, I guess. I mean, Not he could go... He has another zone due to Galatea. Don't forget about that. Oh, so he yeah. could actually just go into... I mean, he doesn't need any other cards than Servant and Spellpower Mastery. So he could go for Nightmare Phoenix to get rid of the Crescendo immediately. Yeah. Yeah, that could be a way to go. I'm just looking through his list and I'm actually... Yeah, he's playing Phoenix, obviously. Because he has to ODK a lot, he has to play the Phoenix. I was searching for it and I was like, is he really not playing Phoenix? But it is there on his list. But now thinking about it, he actually if he does that, then he does not really have any kind of follow-up, right? Because then he still has to get rid of the Dengirsu. Oh, maybe maybe he banished he the skeleton with the Gizmek. That is possible, because he did not actually do it in the standby yeah. phase. So that is possible. And Ac Alexandra actually not looking too happy right now. But he did a good job in summoning Galatea to the left zone yeah. there, actually, because as you mentioned, that Link 2, for example, Electronite or Lambda, which is coming down right there, yeah, both count like to yeah. the middle zone, and Galatea Indeed. also points to that zone now. Oh, seems like battle phase, right? I mean, he kind of has to attack first so that he can get the summon out that might be there. Uh, yeah, indeed. So he doesn't have to fear leading gears to effect on his Servant of Endymion or Spellbound Mastery. Yeah, he really plays oh, around and that. And there is no Skeleton, I assume. Skeleton might be banished. And uh, I mean, with might be, I mean, there is it, a pretty it, good chance that it's banished because... It's like 90%, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> and he now uses Harpoor. I would be really I surprised mean, if he special yeah. summons it out now. <laughs> He's um, rushing through his deck. Where is my 